Hi, Archfield Weather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Tuesday morning, October the 10th. Two big stories in the weather world over the next several days across the continental U.S. and uh, Mexico as well. First of all, a tropical system in the eastern Pacific Ocean, now a hurricane, Hurricane Lydia, will transfer some of its moisture certainly to the Gulf of Mexico. Some of its energy set off the development of a Gulf of Mexico low that looks like indeed it'll produce some heavy rainfall in the northern Gulf Coast region all the way from let's say southeastern Louisiana across the southern por portions of Mississippi and Alabama into Georgia and certainly the Florida Panhandle as well should receive some heavy rainfall from this ultimate Gulf of Mexico tropical system. Also uh, we're watching the uh, likely development uh, later this week into the weekend of a mid-Atlantic uh, storm system right along the mid-Atlantic coastline. It looks like there'll be a, an initial or a primary low that pushes into the Ohio Valley at the end of the week and ultimately a secondary will form right along the mid-Atlantic coastline, likely producing yet another weekend rain event for much of the mid-Atlantic and northeastern U.S. and that could turn into a soaking rain event with some strong onshore northeast winds right along the coastline as has kind of been the trend in recent weeks in that part of the nation. Let's start off with the tropical situation focused on the eastern Pacific Ocean. First of all uh, there is a, a system that is now kind of falling apart named Max right over the central uh, portion of Mexico. Here is Hurricane Lydia. It will move in this fashion over the next 24 to 48 hours or so. It tend to kind of fall apart when it gets into the central part of Mexico, but right now there is another wave sitting right here in the uh, southwestern part of the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of that moisture will feed into this system. It will develop into a low pressure area and move pretty much in this fashion later on this weekend. This entire region right here could get some heavy rainfall as a result from that uh, what will become a Gulf of Mexico tropical system. Now whether it becomes a named tropical storm or, or not, I'm not too sure what the National Hurricane Center will do. If so, it would be right in this region right here, the western part of the Gulf of Mexico. Again, it's kind of a Pacific Ocean the Gulf of Mexico handoff of some energy and certainly a lot of moisture. Whether or not it becomes named, uh, they'll likely receive some significant rainfall again across portions of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and certainly the Panhandle region of Florida. Well, let's take a look here at the forecast map from NOAA's a weather Prediction Center for total precipitation amounts for the next seven days. This goes from this morning, Tuesday morning, to next Tuesday, October 17th. And really two big themes here that we'll talk about uh, in this video discussion. One is that tropical connection from the Pacific Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. Again, again low pressure, tropical low pressure will form over the western Gulf of Mexico and basically move in this direction, east to northeast. It does not look like it'll ride up along the east coast, which had, uh, was a possibility at one time, but it'll produce some heavy rainfall across the uh, Gulf, uh, the northern Gulf region, primarily impacting these areas, the uh, southeastern part of Louisiana, the southern half of Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, all of the Florida panhands, panhandle, maybe even into uh, portions of uh, South Carolina when all is said and done. This is one big theme going on over the next several days. Another one, low pressure will generally ride from west to east in this fashion here. Uh, the primary low will move into the Ohio Valley by the end of the week and then a secondary will form somewhere along the mid-Atlantic coastline. By that I mean maybe the Virginia, North Carolina coastline ultimately producing quite a weekend rain event in the mid-Atlantic region in the northeastern U.S. Again this is kind of fulfilling a trend that we've developed here in the last several weekends in the northeastern part of the nation with uh, some uh, weekend rainfall and in many of those cases it's there's been a stiff northeast flow, a stiff onshore flow, and indeed that looks like that will be the case with, with this upcoming weekend event with a northeast flow. That does two things. It uh, pushes the idea that coastal flooding can become a factor. 
uh, and it pushes the idea that it'll be quite a bit below normal temperature wise place like DC Philadelphia New York City likely holding in the 50s well below normal for this time of the year during this weekend rain event uh, Saturday and it lingers at least in a part of Sunday as well so again two big themes here going uh, across the nation and from Mexico into the Gulf of Mexico over the next several days. Well, let's now walk through the Canadian forecast model from last night's Zero Z. In yesterday's video discussion, we uh, suggested that the CMS, C, uh, CMC model, the Canadian model, was kind of an outlier. It did not really feature a weekend rain event in the Mid-Atlantic, Northeast U.S., where some of the other models did. I did not believe it. It captured that scenario uh, during the uh, morning run yesterday and again last night so we're using the zero z canadian model it has caught on with i think will be a weekend rain event in the northeastern states let's start off by looking at the forecast maps for the uh, at 500 millibars again we have this upper level low sitting right beneath right south of the hudson bay uh, section of canada uh, this originated over the weekend with the influx of tropical moisture some of that energy from tropical storm Philippe moved all the way up uh, into Maine and then kind of got absorbed into that incoming pattern cha pattern changing upper level trough that has parked itself over southeastern Canada that's keeping cool air in place in the mid-Atlantic region again below normal temperatures place like DC Philadelphia New York City and Boston now let's push forward here and we'll see what happens here uh, the system still sits and spins for the next 24 hours or so then we have kind of a trough showing up here in mexico with some of that energy from the pacific ocean hurricane lydia by the way it has maximum sustained winds now of 85 miles per hour transfers energy and moisture into the gulf of mexico and here we go now into the day on thursday that upper level system starts to finally make a move to the east in the southeastern part of Canada but look at upstream here we have another significant upper level feature moving into the intermountain region of the western US and this will indeed produce some accumulating snow in some of those higher elevation locations of Utah, Wyoming, uh, uh, Colorado as well very vigorous upper level low by the time we get 48 hours from now Thursday morning now let's move forward here and again that upper level low over southeastern Canada scoots to the east by the time we get to the end of the work week where this is now the Friday morning forecast map We're right on its heels charging eastward another strong upper level low and that uh, helps to produce a primary surface low over the Ohio Valley by the early part of the weekend and then a secondary system looks like it'll form right along somewhere along the mid-Atlantic coastline perhaps the southern part of the Delmarva Peninsula the southeastern part of Virginia even as far south potentially as the North Carolina coastline and this upper level low just uh, sits around kind of hangs around into the day on Sunday so whatever rain occurs on Saturday may not be a one-day event for places like Philadelphia, New York City, uh, Washington, D.C. There could be some rain extending all the way into Sunday with that upper-level feature still sitting right on top of the region as of Sunday morning. And again, remember, there will be a strong onshore flow uh, associated with this developing surface low-pressure area. Northeast winds will keep it below normal temperature-wise. Uh, uh, highs probably confined to the 50s even in D.C. and uh, Philadelphia, New York City, with this weekend rain event. Now, let's move forward a little bit here uh, in time. We go into the late day on Sunday, it's Monday morning, still sitting right overhead in the mid-Atlantic region. In other words, we will not clear out quickly over the weekend. Rain likely on Saturday and uh, extending into the day on Sunday and even into early Monday. We'll still have this unsettled weather pattern across the eastern states and this is the pattern uh, uh, we've talked about for several days now upper level trough hanging around the eastern u.s while upper level ridging pops up over the western u.s we started off the month of october way above normal in the mid-atlantic region in the northeast u.s some six seven eight degrees above normal for that uh, first several days but we will whittle away at that above normal level 
over the next few weeks in October could very well end up being normal or even below normal in places like uh, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City as this upper level trough over the eastern states will persist. Let's go another 24 hours or so and here we are a week from this morning still upper level troughiness over the eastern states and a strong upper level ridge over the uh, interior or west and while they'll have accumulating snow some of these higher elevations over the next few days uh, later this week and into next week they'll warm up at the same time the eastern states stay cooler than normal well, in fact, we'll kind of see how this translates this 500 millibar height anomaly pattern to the lower atmosphere temperature anomaly. Starting off today here on Tuesday, October 10th, below normal temperature region, uh, re uh, readings across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Mid-Atlantic region, into the uh, New England area as well. Now, we'll move forward here, and we'll see uh, it's, it kind of sticks around for the next couple of days, maybe a little bit less cooler than normal here at midweek in the mid-Atlantic region and then we start to see this uh, development of another, another upper level low over the interior west here by later in the work week at the same time warmer than normal conditions push up into the uh, much of the eastern half of the nation this will be only a temporary uh, uh, pattern here with warmer than normal in the east and colder than normal in the west in fact let's move forward here we'll see that colder air charging to the south and east by the time we get to the uh, end of the weekend into the early part of next week. Take a look at this widespread below normal temperatures this is on the heels of that weekend coastal low in the uh, eastern states that again will push a lot of cool air in uh, from the northeast into the big cities along the I-95 Carter region. We'll go out another 24 hours or so into next Tuesday. This is the uh, a week from today, still a lot of colder than normal air across much of the eastern half of the nation, and we'll uh, see some warmer than normal conditions first starting over in the southwestern states, and then that'll kind of connect to what's happening across Canada where there will be a lot of warmer than normal conditions a week from right now. Well, now let's wrap up with the surface forecast maps. I'm again using the Canadian model run from 0Z last night. It is now similar to the GFS, similar to the Euro in this weekend rain event coming for the mid-Atlantic Northeast U.S. By the way, all these forecast maps from tropicaltidbits.com. Here we still have surface low just south of Hudson Bay, just sitting and spinning there as we begin the day on Tuesday. Now we move forward here. Uh, notice here uh, off the uh, west coast of Mexico, we have that system, Lydia, that moves into Mexico and certainly pushes some tropical moisture from the Pacific Ocean into the Gulf of Mexico. Here we are uh, at midweek here on Wednesday morning and low pressure will certainly form here a tropical low pressure area over the Western Gulf. Whether or not NOAA ends up naming this as a tropical storm remains to be seen. Regardless, some heavy rain is on the way, uh, potentially in southeastern Louisiana and certainly across southern Mississippi, Alabama, and much of Georgia and the Panhandle region of Florida. A lot of that tropical moisture it does continue to move to the east northeast, does not ride up along the Atlantic seaboard. Uh, uh, but here we go by the end of the week, and certainly the Atlantic seaboard will be in play for the weekend event. Here we go now into the day on Saturday. Again, we have that next upper level low moving from west to east across the nation sets off the development of an initial low, a primary low, over the Ohio Valley by the early part of the upcoming weekend. And a lot of that energy will transfer to the mid-Atlantic coastline and we'll see the formation right here of a mid-Atlantic coastline type of low. This is by late Saturday, Saturday night. Again, some uh, heavy rainfall is on the table for this particular system. Whether or not it's uh, in the southern mid-Atlantic or just the northern mid-Atlantic and northeast U.S., a little too early to tell, but certainly uh, a rainy, cool day with stiff onshore flow and a good gust, perhaps up to 40 miles per hour or so. Some of the coastal regions of, let's say, New Jersey, Delmarva Peninsula, Long Island, southern uh, New England here. Uh, as this system gets going, here we go all the way into Sunday morning and low pressure right along uh, the southern New England coastline near 
Long Island, and again, uh, we uh, talked about this onshore flow of air uh, wrapping around this coastal low, and that will raise a chance for some coastal flooding uh, anywhere in mid-Atlantic coastline to northeastern U.S. coastline, and it'll certainly keep it cooler than normal both Saturday and Sunday. And again, notice kind of an inverted trough extending back west from the surface low pressure center as we begin the day on Sunday. And that's because of that upper level feature hanging around, kind of rotating around. In other words, it will not clear out on Sunday. Uh, let's move forward here with the surface maps and uh, certainly still uh, a pretty lousy day setting up for Sunday, much of the mid-Atlantic region. Not as much rain as Saturday, but cloudy, cool, breezy, maybe occasional light rain or drizzle, and certainly some heavy rainfall uh, still uh, possible up across New England on Sunday, even Sunday night. And here we get all the way into Monday morning, still an impact across the northeastern states with that upper level low sitting and spinning. And we have to go uh, pretty much all the way out to Tuesday to see some decent clearing here. And even that may be a slow process. This is now a week ahead all the way to next Tuesday, October 17th. So the a couple of big weather stories over the next several days is Pacific Ocean to Gulf of Mexico. Tropical handoff uh, will uh, result in the formation of a low pressure area over the western Gulf that produces some heavy rainfall across the northern Gulf Coastal region over the next few days, extending all the way from southeastern Louisiana to uh, the Florida Panhandle, perhaps uh, Georgia, South Carolina as well, and a weekend rain event in the cards from the Ohio Valley to the Mid-Atlantic coastline and then uh, throughout the northeastern quadrant of the nation. Expect cool, rainy conditions on Saturday and a lot of that lousy weather will extend into Sunday, even into Monday in that part of the nation. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.